internet friend, it's Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got a new friend online. His name is Rocky, and the last name is Rosen. Is that correct? That's right. I did good. See, it's not like Rocky Balboa, though, right? Not, no, no, you, Adrian, no. Not you, you, get, you get, you get, you get. But I will fight for my clients. There you go. You get some of that stuff, Yo, Adrian. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, what part of town are you in there? Well, I'm in Agoura Hills. Not in California. California, where it's California. sunny. Oh, yeah. The land of fruits and nuts, right? <laughs> where are you? I, I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota, for cripe's sakes. You know, Minnesota. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yes. You gotcha. We just got a little bit of a blue. You know that whole thing with Fargo and all that? Fargo is actually North Dakota. It's not Minnesota. It's just so weird how it all I know. works anyways. I know. Well, I, live, I lived in Madison, Wisconsin for many years. So. Okay, so you get it. And then you got smart and move south. Um, I was originally from Los Angeles, but I always say winter one. I was out in uh, Wisconsin for about eight years. Yeah, the Wisconsin, we, we make fun of the Wisconsin people, but they got that 98% milk and they sell the 2% to us, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're married, you got kids and all that kind of stuff? Uh, I have a daughter, 17 years old, and uh, got a chocolate lab. There you go. My wife and I are divorced, so life goes on. It does. You? you? I got a wife, yeah. and she's got one kid, and uh, we got a little puppy. His name is Kingsley, and he's a lot of fun. He's, he thinks he's a human kind of thing. <laughs> I've got a good dog joke for you, then. Okay, go. Did you hear about the agnostic insomniac dyslexic? That didn't think there was a dog? <laughs> stays up all night wondering if there is a dog. I never heard about the insomniac part. I heard about the agnostic dyslexic, but the insomniac. Hey, yeah. take it one step further. I like that. Perfect. I got it. Okay, seeing we're doing jokes, I got one for you. This is a psychic joke. You ready? A psychic joke. You ready? You got it. Great punchline. You'll be telling it tomorrow. And the crowd goes wild. The old is you know you keep it dripping suspense. <laughs> I'm not, not going to answer that one. Let's get on with this thing. So, all right, we get to know who you are. You seem like you're a real person and not some 15 year old from Sri Lanka screwing around. So you're a real deal. And from what I understand is you help people quit smoking, and you got a very unique title: the smokers, or the nope. cigarette whisperer. The cigarette whisperer. Very cool. Yeah, that's what I do is I whisper people off cigarettes, pretty much. So that, you know, just in just general conversation, that's got to be tough because I know that cigarettes, I mean, up here in Minnesota, it's 30 below and they're out in short sleeves because they got to have their cigarette. It just draws them out. It's fascinating yep. addiction. It's, a, it's gravity. Yeah. It really is. Addicted to it. It, it. it pulls you no matter what, no matter where. I always say, you know, I talk to somebody, I'll ask them, who or what comes first in your life? And they'll often say it's your significant other or their kid. But when you're a smoker, what comes first in your life are the cigarettes. They come before everything and everyone else. And I, I, I struggled with this for many, many years trying to get off cigarettes. And uh, about 12 years, about a 12-year struggle to get off of them finally. But I've been helping people stop smoking since 91, based in Hollywood. A lot of my clients are in, 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 in the quote-unquote industry. But I work with people all over the country, literally all over the world now. Um, because of things like this, because of the way we can do social media, the way we can uh, just connect without having to be in the same room. Exactly. That's the cool thing. I'm, uh, I'm an online marketer myself, so it's, it, mm -hmm. it's that location freedom. You can kind of do whatever you want, where you want, when you want. So you want. when you do this work, is this like hypnosis type work or do you do the physical? No. I, I used to know a guy used to poke holes in his cigarette so he'd suck air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's still, it's still sucking nicotine. Um, First off, it's it's a cognitive approach. It's teaching people how to use the urge to smoke as the way to stop instead of what, what every other stop smoking methodology is, is trying to get people to convince themselves that they don't want to smoke and that they have to stop. And I come from the exact opposite because the truth about those of us who smoke, those smokers, is you do want to smoke. You just don't want to suffer the consequences. Right. And the urges are never going to totally go away, so let me show you how to use the urge as the way to stop instead of always trying to fight it. And the truth is you don't have to stop. You've been telling yourself for years you've got to quit, but here you are still smoking. So you never have to stop smoking. You may hate yourself, your health may suffer, and these things can take you out in a way you can't even dream 
about being taken out or nightmare about how you might be taken out. But you can smoke anytime you want to. And so it's a, it's a matter of leaning in. It's teaching you, when a person calls me, they call me because they hate themselves for smoking, but they love their cigarettes. And what I do is I flip that for them. I teach them how to get really comfortable with their urges and how to really come to hate cigarettes. Because I always say, cigarettes are shaped perfectly. They're just little pricks that want to hurt you. You love them. <laughs> they don't even know you exist. So and your whole life revolves around them. And you deserve better. So it's not hypnosis. It's no tricks. It's no gimmicks. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to appear on a TV show, The Doctor, who's helping a heart attack that couldn't get off cigarettes or couldn't stop smoking. Mm -hmm. If you Google stop smoking trainer organically, because I'm an old guy, uh, organically, I'm the first name that comes up under stop smoking trainer. Um, I'm not really good at much. I'm the best in the world when it comes to helping somebody get smoke free. So I, uh, I used to drink and I quit drinking, but it, it was a process. It was a multiple DWIs. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there's this little thing that clicked in my head that all of a sudden said, well, it just says, I just said stop. It's, it's yep. kind of that kind of thing, isn't it? That all of a sudden there is a t an, an aha moment. Well, let me ask you a question. When you stopped drinking, did you go to 12-step programs? No. Or did you just stop? Drinking? No, okay. I didn't want to do that because they have you say, my name is Brad and I'm an alcoholic. And then I'm stuck being yeah. an alcoholic. And I didn't want to yeah. do that. <laughs> I, I did go because of the, the judge told me to, but I didn't. Uh, I and tried. ironically, the two founders of Alcoholics Anonymous both died from smoking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And let me tell you the difference between stop, you know, you, you, you often hear people say it's tougher to stop smoking than it is to stop doing drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to know why that is? Why is that? Because you're somebody that, do you remember the day before you got sober? Um, no, because it, hap it happened the third uh, DWI when I saw the lights in the rearview mirror, I said done. I was Yeah, okay. But you see, that's just it. You saw the lights in the rearview mirror. Yep. You had a really... You know, you had a reputation in crisis. You had a whole bunch of things in crisis. I literally saw the lights. <laughs> you know, if, if you talk to somebody who's gotten sober, you ask them what today was like before. The day was like before they got sober, and they'll say it was a pretty horrible day, pretty humiliating day. With cigarettes, you don't get that. You don't get that humiliation until it's too late. Right. Um, you don't have that uh, lose your family, lose your job, lose your reputation with cigarettes the way you do with drugs and alcohol. That's why an addict will think it's tougher to stop smoking than it is to stop doing drugs or alcohol. I see. Just a little aside. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Now, that's why I love doing these, these uh, interviews because you have these other epiphanies. I, I, I get to talk to these people about these different things. And I never really thought it about it that way because it's really not like an like a alcohol thing where it's a mood changer kind it's of thing. Mind-altering. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's just, I mean, it gives you a little stimulant, but that's it. But, you know, let me blow your mind. Um, okay. What's nicotine? You know, nicotine is a addictive substance found in tobacco. It's, it's naturally occurring in tobacco. But do you want to know what nicotine is? Because nobody knows what nicotine is in this country. What is it? Well, the tobacco industry has been brilliant hiding the truth about nicotine addiction. It's, it's an insecticide. When a person is smoking, when a person is vaping, all they're doing all day long is insecticiding themselves. Well, I saw that when you look on the package and it talks about cyanide and uh, other stuff that's in these things. Oh, yeah, there's from, well, it, it's, you ignite tobacco. Just the ignition of tobacco, it's going to release over 4,000 compounds. Exactly. I would wonder what you, with the sulfur from the match or the butane from the lighter and stuff. It's like. No, no I'm just talking about the absolute ignition of tobacco. Right. Um, it releases over 4,000 compounds that include things like formaldehyde. Fiberglass, saltpeter, um, take out the saltpeter. That's an additive in the paper so the cigarette doesn't extinguish. Um, there's arsenic, there's benzene, there's actually radioactive material in the ignition tobacco. What about so natural tobacco. What about natural tobacco you know, like out of a pipe? That's what I'm or... saying. You just take a tobacco leaf and you ignite it, it's going to release over 4,000 compounds. Really? And, yeah. The, yeah, that's just the ignition of tobacco and what gets released. And I was about to tell you, there's minute amounts of radioactive material in the ignition of tobacco being get released. And this is where epidemiologists believe that the cancers originate from, from these free radical uh, radioactive materials circulating in our bloodstream, get caught in some plaque, it's, it's stuck in, a, in an organ, it starts to irradiate it and change its cellular structure and the cancer's formed. Right. 
you know, smoking's bad for you. But all smokers know that. Yep. And, and, then, and I'm one of the hardest phone calls for anybody ever to make because uh, I always get a person who'd rather call a really bad dentist than pick up the phone and call me. I'm the last <laughs> phone call. And I know that because of how many times I made that phone call. Sure. You've been there, done that kind of thing. Been there, done oh, that. How long have you been doing this? I've been helping people stop smoking since 1991. I stopped shortly before my 35th birthday, and I never thought this would be my calling. Three years after I'd stopped smoking, a friend said, Rocky, you were in the worst case of anybody I'd ever known smoking. What did you do when I put together my program? Um, I, by teaching you how to use the urge, not fight the urge. You know, it's a four-day program. Day one is how, not, is how to get out of the feelings of deprivation by understanding that you already can smoke anytime you want to. Day two really focuses on how to use the urge. Day three is Independence Day, and day four is independent. Day four is relapse prevention and ongoing support. What that's about. Okay. One of the things when I take on a client is I'm available to them on a 24/7 basis. It isn't just four days. Goodbye. Good luck. Cool. I have a coach standing by 24/7 for you. Well, I like you even just your first step is you kind of get away with from that guilt thing. You know, wow. you know, guilting yourself, be, be more comfortable with uh, the situation. It kind of, kind of frees you up right there. Every smoker has some sense of shame about it, you know, and uh, you shouldn't be ashamed. You know, and I'm not, and I'm not anti-smoking. I'm on no mission from God, trying, you know, getting people to stop. I don't care if a person smokes or not. I care deeply if a person wishes they didn't. Right. If, if a person you, has the desire to quit, you're there to help them with it. That's what I'm here for. Well, but if you don't have to... I don't like doing these too long because people have that uh, that time thing that they've got to deal with. So mm -hmm. could you share like, um, b before I ask my favorite question, if you can share how to get a hold of you, do you have like a website domain people can find you at? We can go to the cigarettewhisperer.com, but I, you know, if you want, just call me directly and I can give out my number. Sure. Uh, which is 818-961-6978. The yeah, Cigarette Whisper. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, here's, here's my favorite question. I think I kind of already know, but the big why, the big W, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. Why aren't you like a ski instructor or a skateboard uh, pro? Or <laughs> Why are you doing this? You know why? Because I couldn't stop smoking. I was trapped. I was screwed. I, you know, my doctors are telling me if I don't stop smoking, I'll be... I sh I'll probably be dead by the time I'm 40. I'll definitely be dead by the time I'm 50. Mm -hmm. I'm 65 now. Um, why do I do this? Because I've been there. It's just one of the greatest sensations in the world to take somebody who's trapped and show them a way out. Got and it. my way out is much different than any other person, any other way out you've heard of before. It sounds like it. I mean, I commend you on that because I've heard of all these things about you know, the, the rubber band on your wrist or the the, 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 you know, the the NLP kind of stuff or hypnosis and all that. That stuff is kind of short-lived. And I think what, what you're doing is the first part, like you would mentioned, is get rid of that guilt so you don't feel bad about yourself. I mean, you're, not, you're not a bad person because you smoke. You just got tricked as a kid. Yeah. You know, what, what you started off doing socially became uh, a habit and that habit became an addiction. And then, you know, I always say, you know, you took the first cigarette, then that cigarette takes the next cigarette, then the cigarettes just take you. <laughs> That's well put. I totally get that. Well, I'm going to sign it. Go ahead. I've got a joke for you. Okay, another joke. Right. We start with a joke, end with a joke. <laughs> Why does a smoker cross the road? Probably to get a pack of cigarettes. Because somebody who doesn't smoke told them not to. I just want to let people know the more you tell somebody don't smoke, the more you're making them want to oh, smoke. Oh, yeah, they just go hide, go somewhere else. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. that. And the, more, and the more smokers tell themselves. See, that makes sense, too, because you probably learned this when you were a kid and you did it rebelliously. So mm -hmm. then that's why you probably continue. Very fascinating. Well, this has cool. been good. Um, if you want to stay on, we'll talk even further, but I'm going to put this one in the can and beam it up to the universe, and then we can share it out to the powers that be. So thank you very I'm much, Rocky. Phone number one more time. Yes, please do. 818-961-6978. The absolute hardest part of stopping smoking is calling me. The rest is really simple. 
<laughs> All right, so there's the first step. Okay, thanks again, Rocky. Appreciate you. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Enjoy. Be well. Be well.